Welcome back to the Amazon, it's Bear Grylls and today we are going to spectate a 510 male dust off his bankroll chasers. The environment right now is quite shitty, just like his skills on the felt. Give it 5 to 10 more days, maybe some episodes, and just like his dating life, his bankroll will be in shambles. This guy hates money. What a fish. Yo, love the vlog, man. Pretty entertaining, but you suck. <laughs> I'm trying to learn a new style. Going from a tight knit to a loose aggressive. This transition is resulting in the spewage of money a little bit. Let's just say that. If you thought part one was bad, well, here's part two. Literally the first shuffle. I, I don't even get a chance to unrack all my chips before I'm dealt pocket jacks. I raised it up to $20. Then the big blind three bets to 65. You don't even let me get situated? So we're already causing problems here. This can't be a good sign. I have a straightforward call. So we go heads up in position in a three bet pot right out of the gates firing. Flop comes eight, five, four, rainbow. Big blind starts off with a bet of $60. Nothing for me to do here, but make the call. Turn is a good card, it's another 5, also bringing in a backdoor flush draw. The big blind decides to pump the brakes, hold up their gunner, he checks. I don't think he's ever going to be doing this with queens plus, I think those hands are still going to be going for value. I believe we're most likely up against a hand like ace-king or ace-queen. We could even be up against a hand like pocket 10s or pocket 9s, those hands could 3-bet at some frequency. Anyways, I decide to bet around half pot. The big blind decides to make the call. Going off to one last card, which comes another eight. Now the board is double paired, and the big blind checks it to me once more. He has around $600 behind. We cover him, and I think the only option here is a big fat all-in jam. I could show up with some busted flush draws or, you know pocket jacks that are really praying to get called. Anyways, after about 45 seconds, the big blind decides to fold. Nice to take down the first pot, show the table who's big dog. We are not a chihuahua. We're coming here to bark, bark. Uh, that, that, I don't know, that got, that went from like really intimidating to really, really stupid quickly. Let's move on before I embarrass myself anymore. I apologize deeply. Five minutes later, the poker gods deliver me pocket jacks once again. I'm like, hey, this worked out really good last time. Let's try it again. This time we're under the gun. I open a 20. Big blind doesn't three bet. He's like, yeah, no, f that shit. I saw what happened to the last guy. I'm just going to call. We go heads up to a flop. King 10, 7, two spades. We have one of those. Action goes check, check. Don't want to get blown off our equity. Turn makes the board even more connected. Not a great card. It is the eight of hearts. Big blind is done checking. He now bets $25. With so many available draws, I have a straightforward call. And we go off to a river, which comes a total brick. Big blind does not slow down, however. He bets $45. We're probably not good here. Uh, you know, that, and I'm, I'm not going to fold for this price. I stick in the chip, and the big blind rolls over 8-7 suited. That is a nice hand. That one's going to beat us. He takes this one down. This next hand gets pretty spicy. We have queen deuce of clubs in the cutoff. Little loose, going to be honest. But hey, we came to play poker. Hijack limps, and I raise it up to $40. The big blind, straddler, and hijack all make the call. Going four ways to a flop of 4-3-3. Three, three. Really just bang this one out. We have a monster of a hand. On a board like this, where we have nothing going for us, this is a situation to exercise a check fold. But it, what do I... I've never heard of that. I bet $80, and the hijack makes the call. This player limp called pre-flop which usually means a lot of like lower pairs, twos through fours. Now that I'm looking at this board, holy actual mother of God, it smashes that limb call range. The turn doesn't make things any better. It's a five. Yikes. This is where I should pump the brakes. Maybe check. Corey, please check. 
Dear God, please check. I bet $125. The hijack doesn't think at all, and he makes the call. Dear God, we need help. We're going to a river, which comes a six. We, we improve to a straight, but the hijack decides to jam all in for $359. Oh, God. He limp called preflop, which means he probably has a small pair. There are a lot of pa It's a paired board. Corey, he has a boat. Fold. Corey, don't count out chips. God damn it. What do you do? Corey, fold. Fold. And we call. And he has a boat. Flopped it. Fours full of threes. Nice hand, sir. We start off on a really great note. I'm in my car right now, and this hand just makes me like... You know what I mean? I'm like Pavlov's dog, where I've just been conditioned to pull money out of my wallet before I even get to the table at this point. Yeah, we had another $700. If you're watching this part of the vlog, comment your middle name. Mine is Reload Station. Corey Reload Station Iring. Nice to meet you. Let's continue with this vlog and please God play better. We have a lot of hands to get to, so we're gonna speed run this one, okay? Here we go. We have Queen Jack, button open, small blind calls, I protect my brethren in blind, I also call. Flop comes, seven, five, three, two diamonds and a heart. Action checks around, turns a four of diamonds. This looks like a board that should connect with my range, but it doesn't, and I don't really give a shit because I'm gonna represent it. Action checks to me, I bet 50, only my brethren in the blind calls. River peels off the two of clubs, he checks, I punt off $150, gets snap called by Jack, seven of spades. Nice hand, sir. This is the same f***ing kid who wrecked my soul with the flopped full house. He's my age. This is Battle of the Zoomers, and Corey is getting his teeth kicked in. Pick it the f*** up, buttercup. Here we get moved to the main game. No more must move. No more hunting, right? That's what you'd hope, but... We have a long episode ahead of us. We have pocket queens in the big blind. Straddle is on. The button raises to $35. Price of poker is going way up. I 3-bet to 140 Button makes the call. Flop comes 8-7-4 with two clubs and a spade. This flop is going to heavily favor the button's range than it is for mine. So I like a down bet, maybe like a third. Anyways, I see about $150. This time the button folds. We were playing 2-5-10. The game quickly became 2-5-10-20. The 20 being a blind race because Chasers doesn't do multiple straddles. It's weird. Anyways, I'm in the low jack with King-10 of diamonds. I raised up to $60. Hijack calls. Then the big blind three bets to $220. I got the vibe immediately that this was a really strong holding. Number one, I just got that gut feeling. But number two, the stakes are way bigger. You have to remember, this is a 2-5 game. When someone is willing to put in $220 preflop, it's almost never a bluff. However, I had a talk with Justin, asshole friend mentor in that order, and he's like, Corey, play bigger pots in position, get in there, don't be afraid, whatever, 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 yada, yada. So I was like, all right, I guess King-10 fits the bill. It should just be a fold. But I decide to make the call. Going heads up in position in a huge pot, flop comes King-Jack for two spades and a heart. Big blind slows down and checks it over to me. Well, I did not flop top hair to check it back, young squire. $200 is the new price of poker. The big blind thinks for a little bit, then makes the call. Turn rips off the nine of hearts. There are now two flush draws on board, and the big blind checks it over to me once again. If the big blind has pocket queens here, could we ever get called light with there being so many draws on board? I think so. I decide to jam it all in and the big blind snap calls, which, they, okay, and he shows pocket kings. Yeah, that's probably going to take this one down. Shit. Oh, my God. Why don't I listen to my intuition preflop? Everything I was thinking preflop was correct, so I should just fold. I don't have to get in huge pots when I think I'm vastly, vastly behind. Whatever. Let's move on to the next stand. The literal next shuffle, 15 seconds after we get our soul snatched by cowboys, we look down at pocket tens. Cutoff raises to $65. The button and straddler make the call. Oh God, 
let me explain to you why this is an oh god situation and not a slam dunk three bet. Well, it is kind of a slam dunk three bet because the raise came from late position and there are multiple callers, meaning the dead money out there is chef's kiss. But stack sizes are 50 big blinds effective, meaning if I three bet, the only option the cutoff has is to jam or fold. Pocket tens. Do I really want to jam all in for a thousand dollars? Fuck it, we ball. I three bet to three sixty five, cut off jams for a thousand, and I snap call. Let's go off to another run out. Hopefully, this one's better. The cutoff has ace king offsuit, so it is a gentleman's flip. In my head, I'm like, please keep it low, dealer. Please keep it low, dealer. Nothing, nothing. Flops clean, turn is clean. River, oh god, woo! We scoop. A massive pot immediately after losing a huge one. $5,000 swing in the matter of three minutes. Here we do some stupid shit with Jack-10 offsuit. Somehow magically put chips in the middle and they get pushed my way. No idea how that happened. And the very next shuffle, we look down at pocket threes on the button. Cutoff raises to $40, which is a little bit larger than he usually raises to. So I'm thinking he has a pretty good hand. I'm obviously going nowhere. I'm going to set mine. I make the call, and the straddler comes along as well. Going three ways to a flop, which comes queen 10 three rainbow. Voila. We love it. Flop and bottom set. Action checks to the cutoff, who c-bets $75. On this board, there aren't a lot of hands that I would be raising. If I had king jack or queen 10, I'd still probably just call. So with pocket threes, that is no different. I make the call, and Straddler gets out of the way. Go and heads up to a turn, which peels off an innocent duck. Quack, quack, bitch. The cutoff slows down and checks. We are going to do no such thing. I fire off $175. Targeting any queen, any unbelieving ten, or really any two cards that he wants to call with. The cutoff thinks that price is reasonable and sticks the money in the middle. Going off to one last card, which comes an awful ace of diamonds. Now the cutoff leads out for $250. This card sucks because a hand like King Jack gets there, and now King Queen is probably just going to fold to a raise. I think the best play is to raise to around 600 bucks, targeting a hand like Ace-10 or Ace-Queen, but I froze up in the moment and just put in the call. Cutoff says he only has a queen and that we're good. I still think a raise here is best because we're missing so much value from hands that now are improved to two pair and really and we're only losing to King Jack. If he jams we can get away. I don't know. Kind of kind of wish I raised here. Here we have pocket eights in the big blind. Both the button and small blind limp. I raised up to fifty dollars. Then the straddler three bets to one hundred and fifty. Back to the good old days where we just good open three bet. <laughs> this player and I have a lot of history. I'm going absolutely nowhere. I make the call. Flop comes beautiful for pocket eights. It comes six six four. I check. Straddler bets a hundred. I make the straightforward call. The turn. <laughs> if it wasn't good now, well, now it is. It's good, but gooder. It's the eight of clubs. Hello. This residence is no longer vacant. We have a full house. Now I'm really hoping my read was incorrect and that he has a hand like queens, kings, or aces because I want all of the money here. I check, hoping the straddler puts in another bet. Unfortunately, he checks it back. The river peels off the five of clubs. I really don't think he has anything. I think ace high is the most likely story. But if he did happen to get tricky and check back a hand like jacks, queens, even kings or aces, well, I want to go for max value. I decide to bet $1,000, and the straddler quickly folds ace-queen. I feel like the best play is a check raise, but it's really disappointing when the player behind you checks it back, and then you just be like, yeah, I have, I have the nuts. Sorry, um, you have ace high. Oh yeah, I wasn't trying to trap you, sir. No, 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 no shot about that. Unfortunate. Let's move on. This next hand is a doozy, and it also happens to be the biggest pot of the night. 
So buckle up, Buttercup. Put your thinking cap on. We have King Jack of Hearts under the gun, plus one. I raised to $30. The low jack, high jack, button, and big blind all make the call. Yep, going five ways to a flop, no problem. Flop comes 10, 9, 8, rainbow. We have an open-ended straight draw. There's no reason for me to bloat this pot up when I'm on an immediate draw, plus five ways, because what are we trying to do? Get through everyone? Absolutely not. I check. And then the low jack fires out $125. That is nearly a pot size bet five ways. This bet is super, super strong. However, the button makes the call, which prices me in to see one more card. The turn peels off the five of clubs. Once again, I decide to check. The low jack does not slow down. He bets $300 with only $225 left behind. I'm not a wizard, but I think this guy is pod committed. At this point, I think I have to fold because I don't have the right odds to see a river. But that all changes when the button also makes the call. At this point, I go deep into the tank. All right, pussies, it's time for another section of nerd shit. I do a little bit of arithmetic, carry the T's, dot the I's. Free flop the pot was $150, turn $375, some more bets, some calls. Pot is $1,125, call $300 to win $1,425, hit any queen, any six, eight outs times two, 16%. Immediate odds not really there, but the button has $1,500 behind. Also, if a queen comes out, we have the Stone Cold Ultra Nutter Butters. The button, if he has a hand like Jack-10, we can jam and he'll probably call and we can absolutely cooler the shit out of them. I stick in the call and we go three ways in a huge pot to a river. Come on dealer, for the one time. The river peels off the queen of diamonds! We river the stone cold nuts in a three way bet 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 pot. Oh my goodness. I don't want to give either of my opponents the opportunity to check especially if one of them has a jack. I now jam for $1,500. The low jack folds, and the button goes well into the tank. Please call. Please call. Please call. A few minutes pass, and he elects on a fold. Fuck! Still, we drag in a massive pot really running well right now. Here we opened up 9-6 of hearts under the gun. I ran out of storage at this point. I don't have the hand history, and I don't know what happened on the flop turn or river. All I know is that we were like four ways and somehow won. I'm still baffled at how we pulled this pot. I have no idea. Here we have ace-queen of hearts in the big blind. Low jack limps. Small blind raises to $35. And the price of poker is going up when the action is on me. I three bet to 105. Then the low jack limp calls my three bet. Alarm bells are going off, to say the least. Small blind also makes the call. So we're going three ways to a flop, which comes king three deuce with two hearts. We flop the nut flush draw and an over card. The low jack only has around 250 behind. So I'm thinking that if I put in a continuation bet, the low jack will jam and we can just get it all in and go off to a run out. So I see about $150. Surprisingly, the low jack just calls with $83 left behind, and the small blind folds. Okay, we go to a turn card, which comes the king of spades, pairing the top card. I have no other option than to just jam for three cents. He sticks in a dime. We go off to a river card, which peels off the three of spades. Complete brick. He shows pocket jacks. He wins the hand. <laughs> nice hand, man. I'm, I'm never folding on that. There's no... Okay, you guys understand. Whatever. Let's move on. The run good continues because we pick up pocket aces in the hijack. I raised to $30. The small blind puts in a 3-bet to 90 As you guys have seen, I have been very active throughout this episode, calling large 3-bets with King-10 like an absolute idiot, putting in 3 street barrels with 5 deuce, who really knows? The guy's a madman. I'm going to take advantage of this image and put in a 4-bet bluff. Psych, bitch! We have pocket aces! It's for value! Who would have thought? Anyways, I throw out $250. The small blind doesn't think too long, 
before going all in for over a thousand dollars. I am so excited that I knock over my chip stack while attempting to make the call. I could not put in a chip in the middle faster. We go heads up to a run out. I think it's really likely that we're up against like pocket kings, maybe pocket queens. So when the flop comes a king, oh, dude, don't tell me. Turn is another king. So if we were up against ace king, now we're losing to that too. I don't know where we're at. The big blind does not seem pleased to show, however. He's not too confident, not too happy. He says, ace high. And I say, oh, well, I have two of those. We take down another massive pot. Our stack is moving, cruising, pushing 80 on the freeway into the land known as Profitville. We went from down $1,800, now well into the black on the session. This next hand is a perfect example of what not to do when playing lag. I have ace-10 offsuit. Flop comes king, king, seven. Guy bets, I call, turn queen. Action goes check, check. River is a nine. He checks to me. I'm like, oh, I have a removal to the straight. I bet $250 and the guy snap calls and shows king, seven off for a flop trips turned boat. And I have ace high, which is a little bit behind that. So we completely torch like $450 on a hand that can easily be a check fold. Super, super stupid. Check fold. I need to be like a cattle getting branded, except instead of some like stupid sign, it's just two words branded on my forehead. Check fold. Mm. Even my groan sounds like a cattle. I am, I'm really starting to fit the role here. Here we have ace eight of spades. We have a flush draw and the same opponent flopped trips once again and then backdoors a flush. So that's a good hand. We lose another 100 or 200 here. Overall on the day, ran pretty damn hot. We were in for 2,800, out for 4,530. If I didn't torch, I think I could have walked away with a $4,000 profit, if not more. All I have to do, make more value hands and stop torching and I will be a very, very profitable player. We're getting there, boys. Give it some time. We'll keep getting better. See you in the next episode.